Hi, I'd like to offer some suggestions on how to plan for, then run, a difficult conversation. There are three things that typically make a conversation difficult. They are the situation itself, the other person and you. Let's look at each in turn. Firstly, the situation itself can just be inherently difficult, whoever was involved. Such difficult situations could include tackling someone's unpleasant body odour, or making someone redundant, generally giving bad news. Secondly, the behaviour of the other person can be difficult. They could be aggressive, sarcastic, dismissive, or upset and emotional. Finally, there is you. Your own behaviours might contribute to the difficulty, as could your own emotions, feelings and anxieties. Fortunately, there is something you can do to make each of these three elements less difficult and more constructive. Firstly, the situation. If the situation is inherently difficult, then be tolerant towards the people involved. Don't make it personal. Focus on the issue. Separate the issue from the individual. Don't avoid tackling the situation just because it is difficult. Avoiding won't make it better, it will just make it longer. Put yourself in their shoes. For example, if someone was going to tell you about your body odour, how would you prefer that to happen? Work out what would be best for you, and use that as your guide. Finally, consider if any of the difficulty in the situation could have been prevented. Maybe the difficulty could be due to bad timing, poor location, lack of notice or preparation, all things that could have been managed better. Turning to the other person. Their behaviour could be challenging, but the following may help you deal better with it, and even lead to their improved behaviour. If they are emotional, then it is best to let them vent, to let off steam. It's difficult to reason with someone who is emotional. Their emotion tends to hijack their reason. If you sit quietly but attentively and let them offload, that's likely to be the quickest way of getting them to become reasonable again. Consider whether they know how they are behaving. Many of us will behave in ways which are uncomfortable or difficult for others, which we don't know about and didn't intend. These are known as blind spots. If the other person has such a blind spot, then they will continue to behave in that way until someone tells them about it. So you may want to consider whether you wish to give such feedback. And if in your view the other person has such a blind spot, then you can perhaps be more tolerant in your approach, since their behaviour is accidental and not intended to be hurtful or annoying. Finally, yourself. In terms of your behaviour, Do you have one or more blind spots? Examples might include a sharp tone of voice, interrupting, avoiding eye contact, defensiveness. However, and generally speaking, it is your internal state, your feelings, emotions, thoughts and beliefs that are the single biggest contributor to the difficulty you are having. Often your thoughts can be negatively focused. Your mind may be full of what might go wrong the difficulties produced by the other person, and perhaps your own sense of inadequacy, vulnerability and lack of control. So it can be really helpful if you can change your mindset from negative to positive. So, focus on what you can control, your own feelings and behaviours. Work out what you can do that's best for the situation and take on board positive thoughts and ideas. Anticipate what might happen But instead of fearing it, consider what would be your best response should that happen. Thank you for listening.